Hey guys, Julian here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about something a little different from my usual, and that is automotive photography. I've been really excited to make this video for a long time for a couple of reasons. One, because I got to hang out with a Melbourne-based photographer that I've admired for a really long time, and that is Tim Harris. And the other reason being that Tim photographed my 1973 Alfa Romeo GDV 2000. Now this is a car that I first laid eyes on exactly 20 years ago at an Alfa Club meet, a meet that I actually put my very first car in, an 85 model Alfa Sprint. And since that day, I've always wanted to get my hands on one. And that day finally came about a month back, the car got delivered to my nonna's house where I've been storing the car until recently. And I caught up with Tim in my nonna's garage to have a little chat about the importance of telling a story through photography, how he finds his locations, and a little bit about the gear he uses. We then head out and shoot the car at one of his favorite locations, throughout which he shares a few little tips and his thought process behind getting the shot. So let's head over to my nonna's garage and catch up with Tim Harris. Well, mate, welcome to my nonna's garage. Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure. It's uh, nice to have you here. I think it's about two, three years ago now that I started following you on Instagram and um, and just fell in love with your work. And, and I said to myself then, the day I finally get my GDV, you're going to be the man to uh, to shoot it for me. So um, before we do go out and shoot, I did want to have a little chat to you about your photography and um, and probably start by touching on what attracted me to your photography most. And to me, that's your storytelling. When you post a set of images and I slide through them on Instagram and by the time I get to the last one, I, I feel like I almost know the person or, or I know their attachment to their car or motorbike. So my question around that is, is that something that you put a lot of thought into or is that just something that comes pretty organically to you? So about five or six years ago, I would have started shooting and I came from a a background of uh, directing and, and script writing, um, but I was always really envious of photographers that yeah, I could just go out in the field and start taking photos themselves. So I was like, man, one day when I get a camera, I'm just going to get out there and, and, and give it a shot. My theory is it's not always about having a perfect image, um, but you know, can you tell a story with what you've got instead, yeah. which is what I've really enjoyed doing over yeah. this last little while. So. Yeah, well, I think you nail it. Cheers, man. The other thing I kind of notice is, I guess, location, which to me, Location and lighting are probably paramount in taking any great photo or taking any photo to the next level, but location, you seem to nail it every time. And it seems to really help with that storytelling. What's your process behind that? How do you select a location for a car or for a shoot? And then how do you find it? I think the first the first thing I do is go, can I shoot the car in its natural environment? Because that's obviously where the story is going to be anyway. I mean, for example, yeah, we started at United's Garage. There's, there's yeah. stories in the walls in this place. Yeah, like you've grown up here. Um, so that if, if I ask myself, can I shoot there, then that, that's number one. Um, but after that, obviously try to do location scouts. And um, when I do a location scout, I'm always looking on the outside of the city because um, that way you can get first of both worlds. You can, you can look for something that's a little bit city-like and if things aren't working there and you know, the buildings aren't working for you there, you don't have to go too far just to um, find a little bit of bush or yeah. whatnot. I always say, never be afraid to shoot the same location twice as well. I think it's sometimes a bit of a faux pas there and yeah. photographers yeah. always want to be doing something new and I, I get that, I get that rush. But, you know, if you become familiar with the location, you're not stressing, you, you, you know exactly what's yeah. around the corner and what the possibilities are there um, when, when you go and shoot. For the, the techie people watching this now, everybody loves a bit of gear. Yeah. Um, so one, what are you shooting on? And then even more importantly, what lenses do you use? What is there a, a, a preferred focal length for automotive? I was on the, the Canon EOS R yeah. and just recently uh, spoiled myself and got the, the R5. Yeah, very nice, very jealous. Um, which is, it's been great so far, just having those, those few extra megapixels. Um, when, when I'm trying to shoot a whole bunch of images, I will just try to stay with the Canon lenses. Um, the, my go-to are the the 16 to 35 and also use the 70 to 200. Yep. Just because when I'm shooting a lot of images, I find that using those two lenses and, and editing, there's a, there's a bit more consistency between sharpness and whatnot. 
Uh, but uh, as you might notice right now, I've got a Sigma 50 mil on there. Okay. But like I said, never want the image to get in the way of a good story. If that's what I need, if I'm shooting in a tight spot, but still want a little bit of compression and a lot of low load, it goes down to like 1.2. So that's, yeah. it's perfect. So variety versatility is, is your go-to. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Cool. Well, I think um, we might as well yeah, jump in the car and Future go for a drive drinks. and cheers. Yeah. This is the neighborhood of 187th Street and Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, not far from where I was born. It hasn't changed much. It's still a busy, crowded place of many racial streets, rich and open. New York is just a huge collection of neighborhoods. People working, worshipping. This one just drove by. I've never shot here before because it's a cafe. But I just really like the, uh, the wooden textures that we've got behind us. I think something like this looks pretty timeless, the building. So, goes well with the timeless car. So I just put up, popped on a Tiffin filter, which is called a Black Pro Mist. Born for video originally, because they just give like a bit of a cinematic bloom, I guess you could say. Make all the lights really soft and uh, softer blacks. But uh, things like the light just become really creamy and things like that. shooting from up here. Now we can just get a different angle, uh, shoot kind of a bird's eye perspective. The nice thing is it's got that grate thing up there, so maybe try something a bit artsy with it in the foreground. We'll see how it goes, the light's quite nice at the minute. I always want to shoot this spot, don't know how it's going to turn out, but it's a pretty interesting looking building. I'm going to give a few different options here. Car parked on three quarter angle. I usually ask the driver to keep the wheel pretty straight, only just for consistency. I know some people do like it turned and sometimes you might want more of an aggressive look. So just to give a little context to these last shots, um, Tim wanted to get some kind of shots, some rolling shots to uh, show a little bit of movement. So as I was driving, there is no B-roll for these shots, but just to give a little context, Tim will run through his thought process. Because it's getting quite dark at the minute, uh, I was just saying to Jules, you're not gonna have to drive super quick because we're shooting one over, I think it's one over 50. So he will be doing about 20 to 30 kilometers an hour. But just because it's such a cruisy sort of vehicle that I can imagine rolling nicely through the back countryside of Italy, I wanted to kind of give that sort of vibe. So that's it, mate. Happy with that? Pretty happy with that one. So uh, we've got some pretty interesting shots, I think, and a bit of a storytelling, but uh, making this car the character of our little shoot here. So it's going to be a fun little edit. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed my little catch up with Tim and the BTS from our shoot. Hopefully you picked up a few little tips from Tim and in particular the importance of telling a story through photography as opposed to nailing that one perfect shot. If you've got any questions for Tim, I'm sure he would love to answer them, just leave them down in the comments below as well. Make sure you check out his Instagram and give him a follow, I'll link that down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, help me out with a like, subscribe and as always, Thank you for pressing play.